Niraj Jadav. Jagadiya Prit. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chairman, sir, for this opportunity to speak. At the very outset, I wish to compliment Honorable President for a very comprehensive and insightful address outlining policy priorities of the government. Sir, by end of March 2017, the 12th five-year plan will come to an end. This will not only be the end of the 12th five-year plan, but it would be an end of an era for over six decades of planning in India. What is the future of planning process in India? There is a talk about a long-term perspective plan, but there is no clarity about the future of planning process in India. Uh, I wish the Honorable President had elaborated on this critical issue which has a bearing on the future of Indian economy and the Indian society. The second issue that I want to raise, sir, is an implementation issue. Reportedly, a very large amount of allocation for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe student scholarships have not been spent. Reportedly, the amount is as large as a uh, few thousand crores. This is, sir, a grave situation that merits immediate and urgent attention. Third issue that I want to point out is uh, the abolishment of the scheduled caste subplan and the tribal subplan. As you are aware, so scheduled caste subplan and the tribal subplan were established in 1979 and 1975, respectively, linking the allocation for the empowerment of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in proportion to their share in the population at the national level as well as at the state level. Regrettably, there is now an abolishment of the scheduled caste subplan and the tribal subplan, and they are being replaced by general schemes like allocation of welfare for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Instead, there should be a transparent, accountable, efficient, and effective centrally sponsored scheme, umbrella scheme, for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, which will continue to link scheduled caste and scheduled tribe allocations to their respective shares in population. Sir, much has been said about demonetization. I have supported demonetization from day one. I'm convinced, sir, that demonetization entails short-term gain, short-term pain and a medium to long-term gain. What has happened, sir, is that the short-term pain has been exaggerated while the long-term gains have been underplayed. There have been severe, severe uh, serious objections have been taken. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I want to point out two or three of them. One of them, a very serious objection that has been taken, is that money has been taken away from the poor people. Actually, what has happened or what is happening is exactly to the, count, uh, to the contrary. Uh, what is actually happening is a redistribution of wealth from the tax evading wealthy and corrupt to the poor people of our country. This is a Robin Hood kind of job that the Pri Honorable Prime Minister is doing for which I ne we need to compliment the Prime Minister rather than criticize him. The second one, there is, there is, there is, there is an argument made that, uh, there is an argument made Sir, you please, please, sir. you please continue. Yeah. The second point, uh, you second please continue. point that I want to make about demonetization is that there is a lot of talk that the total amount of fake currency in our country is only 400 crores. So if the total amount is only 400 crores, why do we demonetize very large amount of currency, more than 14.5 lakh crore of currency? Because the ratio of fake currency to the total currency is very small, 0.02%. Sir, this is a very insensitive kind of argument because what is being done is to make a strike against the counterfeit currency which, is, which has been financing the terrorism in our country. Now, if somebody says, what is, how many people have died out of terrorism? In our country, sir, from 1993 to 2016, the total number of deaths coming from terrorism have been something like 35,000. Now, if somebody makes an argument that what is the ratio of the terrorism-related deaths of 35,000 
to the total Indian population of more than 125 crore. That ratio is incredibly small. Does that mean that the terrorism problem is a small problem? So what is being done is to make a strike, and a very right kind of decision has been taken to make a strike at the fake currency issue. The third objection that has been raised is that in a preparation was, it, who is running this house? Is no, the no, no, chair please. running this house or somebody no, no. is sitting you here? You please continue. Thank you, sir. Uh, let Thank you, have chair. You, there is also an argument made that enough preparation was not made for demonetization. And particularly, the issue of recalibration of ATMs has been raised. In ATMs, sir, I know thing or two about this because uh, I worked with the Reserve Bank of India all my life for 31 years, and I, I was involved in this process. Sir, in ATM, in ATM there are three bins which are there, 100 rupees, 500 rupees, and 1,000 rupees. And they are highly sensitive to the weight and size. Now, if the government or the Reserve Bank of India had issued instructions to all the commercial banks that you recalibrate your, uh, your all ATM machines uh, with the new size and size of 100, uh, 500 and 2000, that would have obviously leaked out the, what was the intention of the government. So it means that on one hand, the government had to prepare, go on preparations, and at the same time, on the other hand, secrecy had to be maintained. I think the timing was perfect. Timing of demonetization was perfect, striking the right kind of balance between the adequate preparations to be done on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, maintaining the secrecy of this event. So it is fully justified. The fourth point that I want to make about demonetization is that a lot of people believe that the money which has come back to the banks, very large amount of money has, been, has come back to the public sector banks and private sector banks, more than 14 lakh crore. Some people see that as a failure of the scheme. It is exactly the opposite. The money which was lying around, the money, the cash hoardings which were kept in the, in the, the, you know, the, uh, which were maintained in uh, secret places and uh, stored in ceilings and in the floor and places like that. All that money has come back into the formal system. This is an achievement. This is a big step in financial inclusion. And, and it also, the criticism is made that the money coming back to the banking system means that the black money which was there earlier has become white money. Again, to the contrary, because the investigation is on where wherever the money which has been credited to the account, deposited to the bank accounts, if that is disproportionately larger than the known sources of income of the depositors, then the investigation is going to reveal. Why the total amount of black money has not been revealed? Because this investigation is going to take some time. Even in the 31st December speech of the Honorable fin Prime Minister, uh, people said that the total figure was not disclosed. Even the data like the prices data, the inflation data, GDP data, all data take, there is always a lag between the happening and the release of the data. The, it will require a certain amount of time before the data is clearly available about how much black money has come back into the system. Sir, all in all, a lot of people had predicted that this is going to hurt our economy very badly. Uh, I had said, in fact, the former Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, in the floor of the House said that the GDP will come down by two percentage points and it will take a long time to recover. You know, all the estimates show that the actual decline in GDP rate of growth is going to take place only in the third and fourth quarter of the current financial year and from the year beginning 1st April 2017, uh, in the new financial year, not only the growth rate will come back to the earlier levels, but this will be an acceleration of growth with creation of a lot of jobs. So this is demonetization, it's changing, completely changing the way the Indian economy has been functioning, has been operating. It is going to make it more transparent, more accountable, more clean, and therefore more sustainable growth in future. Sir, I thank you for indulging and also thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you very much.